So welcome back coders. This is a uh, tutorial on the child's play game loop. We're going to set up a project. We're going to create some initial variables. We're going to create a game loop that cycles between two players and checks for what their scores are. So we're going to start off with mainly these first steps here, just being able to create a game loop that cycles between two players. We'll probably talk about the score check and where to put that in our pseudocode. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, go into REPLIT and create a new REPL. So I'm going to just go to REPLIT. Go. I just want REPLIT Python. That's fine. There you go. Once you go into REPLIT and you log in, and get into, oh, it's taking me forever. Come on, there we go. Go ahead and log in. Create a new Python replit. I'm gonna call this uh, game loop. Two player game loop, I guess. 2P game loop. All right. Now the way that this game is gonna basically work, we're going to make two different turns that alternate between each other. So it doesn't matter what kind of game you have, this is a two-player game loop. Look up there, that's great. There we go, okay. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna make a game loop. And we also actually, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna have our initialized variables. So what are the things that I'm gonna need? I'm gonna need some kind of round counter. So I'm gonna say round number and that's gonna start at zero. And I'm gonna increase that number by one every time a round happens. Other thing I want is I wanna have some scores. So I'll have like a score list, something like this. And you can, you can do camel case. For variables though, typically we don't use camel case, we use uh, underscores and we use uh, just all lowercase. So we have score list and I'm just gonna put zero and zero as the first initial part here. You could also have, um, if I didn't wanna put a score list here, I might wanna put like a, a player list as well. And typically we would use dictionaries for these kind of things, but we didn't talk about dictionaries. So I'm just gonna make two players. There's gonna be Bob and Alice. So Bob and Alice. All right, I'm just making it all computery here, making it all uh, capitals and stuff, just to uh, not worry about casing and all that. So we got three things. We have a round number, we have a player list, and we have a score list. And this is all I really need for my basic two-player game loop. I'm not gonna say how each player scores or anything like that. I'm gonna leave that all up to you and how you're gonna build that. But the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make a game loop. And the easiest way to do this is to just make a while true loop. So while true means that as long as this is true, which it's always gonna be, this is referred to as an infinite loop, infinity loop. Basically, this is gonna happen forever. It's gonna keep on staying in this loop forever until we tell it to break. If we want it to break for some reason, we can tell it to break out of this infinity loop. This is just gonna run constantly forever. So what do I want it to do? I wanna take its round number and I'm gonna add one to the round number first. So I'm gonna put plus equals one. And that's saying that every time that this line of code happens, it's gonna increase, plus equals is an incrementation operator. It's gonna add one to this variable round number. I'm gonna make it print out that round number. I'll say print, uh, I'll, in quotes, round, and then I'm going to put a comma and then put the round number. Let's see if this works. If I press play, Bam, it's looping forever. And I can see that it's just gonna keep on going. Woo! Yes, the win is gonna have a break function. Exactly, Caleb. So there we go. We can see that this is happening forever. It's an infinite loop. And it's just adding one to this variable round number. And then it's printing out that round number. So this is a really long, really, really long um, 
uh, rock, paper, scissors game. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We've got that all done here. We have our infinite loop in place. This is just incrementing what round we have. Now let's say we want player one to be on one side. So we'll say if the round number is dividable cleanly by two, I'm gonna put, uh, it is, let's see, whose turn do we want? We want uh, player one, so player Bob right here. So I'm gonna put for the player list, I'm gonna put player underscore list, and then in here I'm gonna put zero, which means that it's the, the zero index of player list, which is the first one that shows up. Remember the first one isn't one, the first one is zero. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be that per person's turn. So I'm gonna put that and then gets to play. I'm just gonna put that all in caps here so you can see it's very simple. So if the round number is evenly divisible by two, that is, uh, that is you can divide it by two and there's no remainder, then I'm gonna put this. And this is actually backwards because it would be dividable by two. We probably want the second person to go if the round number is, is divisible by two. Now I'm gonna put an else command. I'll put else. That is, if the round number is not divisible cleanly by two, then it's gonna print the other one. So I wanna take this, and I'm just gonna put the other person in there. I'm gonna put player list zero. There we go. So that's all you need to know. You can go between your two different rounds by saying if the round number is dividable by two, then this person goes. Otherwise, the other person's gonna go. There we go. So now, let me press play here. You're gonna see that every, if I pause this and we look at this, if I go all the way up to the top here, oh, I can't really go up to the top. You know what? Let's put an input command just to make it to where it waits for you to type something in in between every round. So I'm gonna put input and I'll just put press a key. And maybe I'll put like a couple of, uh, line spaces. Remember, you can use slash n to be able to put in a new line. So let's try that. Now I'm going to run this. Clear this out. There we go. So round one, Alice gets to play. Press a key. I'm going to actually take this code and put that in here down here below as well. So you can think of this as player one's turn so I'm just gonna put here player one turn and this is gonna be player two's turn or actually it's gonna be the opposite this is player two's turn and this is player one's turn because remember we're going based off of that uh, player to list zero here so let's check it out round one Alice gets to play okay so that's gonna be list one right here Alice is player one here, perfect. Or actually, Alice is player, technically, player one, yes, but it would be index one. So just remember, this is zero over here, and this is one. If you're talking in rounds, one is gonna be Alice, and then Bob's gonna be the next one. So if I press a key here in the command, now it's gonna say Bob gets to play. Press a key. And now we have the ability to cycle between Bob and Alice, just like that. There we go. So now I just have to put in my functions for what would happen with a turn. And make sure that anytime you have a reference to the player that's gonna be done, you wanna use this player list reference here. This is basically this person, index one. And this is index zero, which would be Bob. Just make sure that you know the difference between each one. And right now I'm just gonna make their scores in reference to uh, what position they are. So Bob would be index zero of the score list and Alice would be index one of the score list. So let's say that uh, Bob makes a score or gets a point. I could make something to be able to show the scores. So I could do something like uh, print or right here. I'll just say that every time that uh, player two runs, they get a point. Let's just say that that happens. I'm not every, everybody gets a point in this game. So I'm just gonna make it to where um, after this turn is over, I'm going to say score list 
and I'm going to specify which score I want to increase. I'll say score 1, the index 1. I'm going to add 1. So I'll, I'll say plus equals 1. And it's going to add 1 to the score list index 1, which is this second one right here, Alice's score. And then I'm going to print the scores. So I'll say uh, scores. Quotes scores. Uh, Bob has, and I'm going to put a uh, score list, and Bob has the zero index. And then I'll put, sorry about all the, the uh, things covering up your text here. So we can see that I'm making a string that says scores Bob, and then it's going to list what B Bob's score is. And then I'll do a new line. Actually, I'll do a new line here too. There we go. And then I want to show Alice's score, so I'll put Alice. And then I'll list what the score list is for Alice, which is one. All right, so here we have scores. Then it's going to put a new line and put Bob. Now, if you don't want it to be hard coded, Bob here, you could put in the name of the person or the index here. So instead of making it Bob, I could make um, I can make it actually list out with a comma, um, player list index zero, right? So that way, if they change their names, then it'll still look good. And then right here, I don't want Alice here. I want to put. Uh, player list player lists and I want to put one all right so let's take a look at this real quick so you can see how it works there we go all right so what's gonna happen it's going to show Sorry, once again, for the IntelliSense here. Let me zoom this out a little bit so we can look at this code. You can see it says, press a key. It's just waiting for an input. When you press a key, it's going to give us a score. So it's just taking the score list. It's taking the first entry here and putting one. It's adding one to it. For player two, I want to add score list zero. So that way, uh, the other player gets a score. And then right here, I want to basically make it to where it prints out the scores. Now I would make this, I would turn this into a function that checks the score. That's all you gotta do for that. Like you, I would make a function that just prints out the scores. This is just showing you how the general round would look. So this is adding score. This is waiting for a command. This is showing whose turn it is. And this is printing out the scores. So let's look at this more in depth. This is a string, it says scores. Then it's going to put the player zero name. Then it's gonna put a colon and it's gonna put the score for player zero. And then it's gonna have a list, or then it's gonna show player one's name or player index one, and then show the index uh, one score list. So let's check it out. If we run this, see what happens. It says Alice gets to play. When I press a key, Alice gets one point. It says scores, Bob zero, Alice one. Now Bob gets to play. When Bob presses a key, his score also increases by one. And so we see now Bob has one point and Alice has one point. So we have, really we have five variables happening here. We have the round number, which decides whose turn it is. Then we have the name for each of the players in a list. And then we have the scores for each of the players also in a list. And this is the Bob's scores in relation to this index and Alice's scores in relation to this index. Now, if we were using a dictionary, we could have the name also have a value and we could have all this in one thing, but we didn't talk about dictionaries, so, um, so you could just use two lists. 
totally fine. The thing about lists versus dictionaries, you can have values associated with keys in a dictionary, but they're unordered. So I wouldn't be able to refer to like player zero and player one like we do with this list, which makes it just a little bit easier to work with conceptually. All right, so that's all you need to know really in order to think about how you can separate your scores. What you would want here, instead of having a score list, I mean, you'd wanna to add to your score with this definitely. But right here where we have waiting for command, this is where you'd have the actual like the turn, whatever happens in the turn you would put here for the input. And then depending on if they got a point or not, that's when you would use this adding to the score list. As far as printing out the scores, this is something that you could use pretty much indefinitely. It's an easy way for you to be able to have a list of players and also to have a score. I also wanna put in one more line break because I don't like how it shows the scores and there's no break in between round two here. So let me just put one more line break in there just to keep it looking nice. There we go. Now, if we run this, we can say it says round one, Alice gets to play. A turn would happen here. And then it says the score, and then it says round two, so-and-so gets to play. Cool. So let's say we want to play to a certain number, and then uh, we want that number to kick us out of the game, right? Or maybe there's only so many rounds that we want to play. You can make it that way too. You can, you can make the end of the game based off of whatever variables you want. But let's just say we want to play first to 10, or first to five. What I can do is at the end of my turn here, I could put uh, so-and-so, we, we could do a, a check for the game. So once again, you wouldn't wanna just do all this direct like this where I'm just putting every single one of the things. You'd wanna create functions for these things. You'd wanna make a function for the score to be printed out. You wanna score a function. It makes, just makes things easier to look at really and to understand. But let's get to the last part, which would be if the, uh, let's say for all of the scores. So for, for items in our score list, I want it to loop through all of the items in the list. So it's gonna look, loop through the lists. This is gonna be looping through the score list. What do I want it to do? I want it to check to see if a score reaches a certain number. So if the item, for every item, if the item is greater or equal to, we'll say five, whatever our play limit's gonna be, then we will say player print player list, whatever the player is for this particular list, player list, and this one is player list one. So player one will win the game. The way this particular one works is that only this player is gonna get a score so if we did a coin flip or something, we could make it kind of randomly based. And we'll do that for the next class. We'll talk about how we can make it like randomly choose who the scorer is gonna win or if you get a score or not. And then we can see this work in action. Right now, it's really just gonna be player one's gonna win every time because they're the first person that gets to run. But basically we're checking to see, we're checking all the items in the score list. And if somebody makes it to five points first, then they're gonna win. So I'm gonna take the same code right here and put it down here. I would just make this a function to check the score and then it doesn't matter who is currently it's playing. It's gonna work based off of uh, whoever's running. So there we go. We're gonna say in this case though, that player list zero wins. And another way I would do this also, we'll, we'll do this when we create our next uh, example but we wanna make it to where the, the player who gets to play, we will save that as a variable and we can call that for all this stuff down here. So we could say like the current player is this player, player list zero. 
And then all of our all of our code that we write, all of our functions can work off of that current player variable. And that'll make it really easy to be able to do this. Uh, no, Caleb, you don't have to import the, the line. Just make sure you use the right type of slash. It's the one that's over your enter key, not the one that's next to your shift key. Yeah, you gotta put it in quotes, yeah. All right, so there we go, we've got all this stuff. Let's see if it works. Let's see who's gonna win here. If And we'll also break out of this. So we're gonna print that a player is gonna win in this if statement. And if they do, we're gonna break <coughs> out, of, uh, out of this loop right here. So let's try this out. Alice gets to play. There we go. So we've got Alice wins right here at score five, but we see the game is continuing on. It does say that once Alice reaches five points that Alice wins, we can see that if Bob plays and presses a key, that it says that Bob wins when he gets to five points. Now it's just gonna say that both of them are gonna win because we didn't break out of our main loop. So we have to have a way for us to break out of this while true loop. And a way to do that is we can make a variable called game over or game, uh, game on, something like that. And we can make this instead of while true, we can make it work with a game is on variable. So let's try making a variable here. That's just uh, game is on and make that true. Now right here where I have this while true, I can make this while game is on, I can make this while game is on. And when we start our game, it's gonna be true but we can turn game is on is to false if we get one of these lists here. So right here, if, if item is equal to five, it says that somebody wins, and then we can say game is on equals false. So now the next time that it tries to run this, this for loop up here, this thing that this, I'm sorry, this while loop, it's gonna keep on running as long as game is on is true. And any time in the code that we want to, we can turn game is on to false to break us out of this infinite loop. It's, it's no longer an infinite loop. Let me take this game is on equals false. I'm gonna take this, and put this in here. Here we go. So now if either player has a score that is greater or equal to five, it's gonna say that that player won and it's going to turn game is on to false which is gonna break us out of this while loop. Let's try it out. Alice gets to play, she earns a point. Bob gets to play, he earns a point. We keep on going until one of them has five points. And now it says Alice wins, and look at that, it broke out of the game. Now it's no longer carrying on. We've, we've permanently broken out of the game and it says Alice wins. Now we probably wanna put in something that says that uh, that the game is over and maybe you can play again if you want to. And I could actually make that happen if I made a function for this whole game loop to start in and for it just to call that function if I wanted to play again. That would be a way to run this to make it work. And we'll cover those things when we come back into class next time. But what did we talk about here? We talked about how to set up your project, how to have your initial variables, creating that game loop cycling between two players and how to check with a, some kind of score. All right, everyone, I hope you have fun creating this project. If you need any help, just message me in Schoology, let me know. And uh, until next time, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Start, on, start your, uh, your coding early, and then you'll have plenty of time to do debugging and testing later on. Enjoy, you creative cats.